we'll get going. <clears throat> I welcome everyone to the April training class for the Transmark Foundation. Uh, today, uh, our trainer will be Monica Cueto from Rancho Bioscience, and she's going to be talking about and giving us an introduction to data loading for beginners. I just want to say a few words uh, first about um, our training program. Uh, this is uh, part of a series of classes that we have throughout the year, uh, and a number of interesting classes still to come as well, uh, including uh, Smart R, uh, some introduction to programming in the Transmart interface, uh, how to load your data, a more advanced look at some of that, uh, some of the data modeling that you can do within Transmart. Uh, and a couple of interesting presentations on some more complex analysis that uh, you can do. Um, this year, we've decided to not have so many classes on training for beginners. Those are recorded and available, uh, but actually try to have some of these other topics. And uh, as I said, these are all recorded uh, and available for you to look at on the training site uh, on the website. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, and these are all gathered together there on our YouTube channel. If you look at the training playlist, there's a little more detailed uh, description of some of the, uh, the, all the topics that we'll be covering this year. Uh, and again, uh, more details are available on our website. And um, you can also uh, take a look uh, at, um, uh, at some of the details there and register uh, for the training classes. So uh, this class, this session will be uh, recorded and uh, we'll have it available within a day or so. So um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Monica, who will um, walk us through. And uh, if you have questions, uh, this is a go-to go -to webinar, so that means that uh, you're all muted. And so if you want to ask a question, you have three choices. <clears throat> you can raise your hand, and I will be watching for your hands. You can type a question into the question panel, or you can send a message on the chat window. So if you have questions, let us know. We'll try to get things answered. If not, uh, as you ask them, um, at a break or at uh, at the end of the, the session. Um, so I will now turn this over to uh, Monica. Hello. Thank you. Just, just Thank a you second, for the introduction. Okay. Uh, okay, and uh, there you go. You should have control now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you really for the introduction. So I'll start sharing my screen. Um, can yep, you see my screen? It's, it looks good. It's perfect. Yep. Uh, which one? Because I have two. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. This you're at the Transmart login. Oh, that's good. That's the one that I wanted to show you. Great. Okay. Thank and now you're to, you now for you're the introduction. Spots. So uh, good. So today's session is going to be about data curation and loading. And I'm also going to do it using the Transmart data loader that was developed by formerly known Thomson Reuters, now Clarivate Analytics. Um, because this is the, the data loader that I use. I've worked with Thomson Reuters before. I'm working now with Rancho Biosciences. And we also use uh, this ETL tool. Um, during the, this webinar, feel free to ask me questions and even after the webinar if you're watching this using the YouTube channel feel also free to email me if you have any question for today's I would like to start by giving you a brief um, demonstration what is the loading how does it look like using the Transmart data loader a brief introduction about this tool what are the guidelines for data curation and then I'll try to focus more on the clinical data I'll give a brief introduction about high dimensional data using gene expression as an example. You can all also um, check the training session by Natalia from the Hive. She gave a training session in February and she, she showed us a lot of cool examples using high dimensional data. So I recommend you to watch that as well. Um, I'll show you how you should load a study's metadata. So this would be to use the Browse tab on, on Transmart and how to upload files into Transmart. I've tried to prepare the slides so they are as complete as possible, so you could almost use them as a manual. I will not have time probably to go through every tiny detail, but 
since the, the slides are going to be available on Transmart's Foundation page, you can use them um, afterwards. And I'll also leave at the end an example of data creation and loading step-by-step -step using a geo study. So how does the demo look like? And first, the first thing that you need is to have Transmart installed, probably in a server or locally. If you have it on a server, uh, and this was covered, I think, in a previous uh, training session, you have to be able to move files into the server. And you can do this by using a tool like WinSCP. This is an open source that would allow you to transfer files. So you'd have to set up the connection to your server. Probably you'll have to ask some, the person that installed the, the Transmart to help you with this. So you would put the host name of the server, the port, your username and password, and you would connect. So once you are connected, you have access to your um, local environment, so your laptop, your desktop, and you have access to the server that is running Transmart. And you just have to drag and drop the files that you prepare to be loaded into Transmart into the server. In this case, I have um, a file for Transmart and I have a file for the ETL data. And so here I'll put all my ETL files to be loaded into Transmart. And as you can notice, I have three, three folders here, test studies, public studies, and merge studies. Um, I'll open my test studies. And you can notice here that I have um, a done text test 001. So this done means that this study was already loaded. And I have uh, this test two that doesn't have any um, done tag here. So it means it was not loaded. So I want to try to load this study. And inside you can see that I have clinical data to be uploaded and my files. And then after, uh, in the following section, I'm going to show you how to prepare these files. So, but once you have this, you will have to connect to the server using this uh, PuTTY extension. If it requires password, you'll have to um, put your password. Okay, I'm in. So now I have to move into the folder that contains my ETL file. So in my case, this is the folder TM data loader. And then I just have to run the command that, that calls the, the ETL tool. I hope this is big enough. So this is uh, java-jar, and this is my ETL file, so tm underscore etl dot jar. And in front, I have some options, and I'll talk about these options a little bit later on. But one of the most important options are this dash i. So this is, I mean, it's going to run in interactive mode. It's going to show you what it's actually doing uh, while you're waiting for the study to be loaded. So let's press enter. This one is going to be really fast uh, loading because it doesn't have um, high dimensional data, so it's just clinical data and it's a test study, so it's really small. And you can see it run. I have here information that the procedure was completely successfully. Uh, and now if I go into I can see here my test too. Sorry, I should have shown you this before that this, this study was not here. And I have here my, my data. But we can, we can do the following. You can uh, delete the study and show that it's going to disappear from here. And for that, I will uh, run the delete study. So you can delete study using either the ID of the study or by path. So if you want to see what is the ID of this study and you don't know and you don't, 
you could either open the file, one of the clinical data files, and, oh, sorry, it's saying that it doesn't have the file because it changed the name of the folder. So it means I have to go back here. I'll refresh this, and you can see it changed to done. My clinical data as well. It has a new file that is called summary statistics. I'll talk about this later. So if I open one of the clinical data files, I can see that the first column contains my study ID. So I can use this ID to delete my study. Alternatively, you can go to Transmart user interface, um, select your study, go to grid view, and here you can also see under trial, this is your study ID. So to delete this study, we come back to our black screen and we put the delete um, command. So again, you call your ETL tool, you can run it also in the interactive mode, but then you put dash dash delete study by ID and um, your study ID. You run it. As you can see, it's running the procedure delete data. And once it's done, so completely successfully, we can go back to our uh, Transmart instance. Let's refresh this. And it's gone. So I would consider the loading part as the easier part. Uh, what is sometimes a little bit more complex is to prepare the files, and I'll show you that in, in a second. So as you notice, my um, in my server, let me close this. So this March studies, public studies and test studies, it's the same structure that I'll have on the Transmart tree. So you can see March studies, public studies and test studies. So inside my public studies are all the studies that I have also in my server and that I loaded. Okay, let's go back to our uh, presentation. Back to this stage where we just have to run uh, a simple uh, command line. We can do this um, because Thompson Reuters developed this Transmart data loader. I'm sure that there are other ETL tools that are also great, but because this is the only one that I know, this is the one that I will talk to you about. Um, and it's quite flexible and it supports multiple mapping options. And you can use almost your uh, original data files to load directly into Transmart with minimal manipulation. You can find more about the Transmart data loader using the wiki. The wiki has been uh, developed recently, and it, I think it's quite good and quite complex, uh, complete. So if you go to this link, you can find more about uh, advanced options, the templates of the files, and so on. So to have the data ready to be loaded, you'll have to have your um, files arranged in the following order. So as you saw on, on uh, my test um, study, I had a folder for my, for my study. So usually you should have also uh, a standard for naming your folders. And in this case, for instance, for geo studies, we usually use um, the condition, the author, and the study ID, so the geo um, ID. Then inside of the study folder, you'll have folders for your clinical data and for your expression data. And if you have also RNA sequencing data, you would have another folder, microRNA uh, sequencing, so on. And inside of each folder, you'll have your data file, it's this one, and then the mapping file. For expression data, you'll have your gene expression data file, the, the file that will map subject to samples, and the platform. 
So once you have your folders in this um, structure, you can run DTL as I showed you. So this is the command to run DTL. This is without options. If you want to see the available options, you can put uh, dash dash H. To delete a study, as I, I told you, you can either delete by ID, as I, I, I did, or by path. And you can also move a study from one folder to another. As you've seen, once the study was loaded uh, successfully, the name of the folder changed to done. If it fails, it changed to fail. And imagine that you have the files prepared, you want to move into the folder, but you don't want to load them right away. You can always disable them with uh, this tag. So uh, I think important options, as I told you, is the interactive mode. Uh, so you can see what is going on while you're loading the study. Another thing that I find quite useful is to run the check duplicates. Um, and you'll find out uh, a little bit later why is this important. So you can see if you're trying to um, insert for the same patient um, the same variable twice and DTL will fail, but will generate a, a file showing where is it failing. Then you have other options like uh, if you don't want to rename the folders when it fell, this can be useful when you're doing a lot of tests and keeps failing and you don't want to keep changing the folder name. Or if you want to stop it when it fails because you're testing and you don't want to wait until the end. Then you also have um, this option to allow non unique columns. Sometimes when you're preparing the files, um, you copy paste columns and you use the same column name. And as a quality control, the ETL would not allow you to have two columns with the same name because it could mean that you're trying to load the same variable twice. But if you know that you're just using that column um, to build your file, you can say, okay, allow you non unique column names in my clinical data file. Then you have options about the visit names. I'll show you uh, more about the visit names uh, later on when we're preparing the clinical data file. So as I told you, you can run the ETL tool using a FTPS FTP client, for instance, in SCP, connect to the server as I showed you, open the putty session. And one of the options that I found um, very useful, instead of running the command as I, as I um, run, so java-jar tm underscore etl jar, you can put no up before this command. And that means that all your um, log for the for the loading are going to be stored uh, on on a file, and you can access this file tailing the file. So tail minus f minus n, so number of lines, and then name of the file. And that means that if you close that uh, screen, the loading will not stop because if you run just like this, if you close the window while your ETL is running you're going to stop um, the detail procedure. But if you run it like this and you, I don't know, sometimes you may want to run it overnight because it's a, a very big file and it takes uh, several hours and you want to make sure that your computer uh, doesn't close, doesn't crash, doesn't, I don't know, uh, hibernate. So it's better to run it using this, this option. So in what, does the, the interactive mode uh, tell us? How, how can we read all those lines? And especially in that case that they run so fast, let's just try to break it down a little bit because they are really useful. So once it starts, uh, and this is from the example that I've just loaded before. So for uh, text test um, 002. Once you start loading, um, the ETL will tell you, okay, I found a study that was not loaded and this is the study ID. I'm going to start processing the clinical data. So I'm connecting to the server and I'm checking your mapping file. Okay, it doesn't say anything about the mapping file. So the mapping file was fine. Then it starts processing my clinical data file. So it's processing my TST001 file. It has 12 rows. It's processing my demo file. Mm, I have some warnings here but they are just warning. So it means that the ETL is going to run, but it is it telling you that you have missing values for some columns. Okay, maybe you don't have 
uh, data for, for the specific patients in this uh, variable, but it's letting you know that you have some issues that you might want to ha have a look. Uh, on this, the same thing, and then this one runs perfectly. So once it analyzes your uh, mapping file and your clinical data files, it starts running the stored procedures. And important things in here that you should have, um, keep your eye um, in case you run into problems. So one of the thing is um, the procedure is going to set single visit name to null. So it means that if you're working with a clinical data where you're using visit names, so you have, for instance, baseline, follow-up, and for one of the variables, you only have one visit name, the procedure is going to drop that visit name. If you don't want that, you have a specific option on the ETL for that. Um, in this case, also is adding, uh, is missing the data label, visit name, and de data value to the category path. And I'll show you what this means on, on the mapping file. And here is checking for duplicate on key columns. So this, is, this means that is checking if you're trying to insert the same variable multiple times for a patient. If you're trying to, it's going to fail, and it's here that it's going to fail. When it runs successfully, it says here, procedure completes successfully, and it's done. So let me give you an example when it fails. For instance, um, when I was doing, trying to load this study, I've, I've actually downloaded a study from GitHub. This is one of the um, TEM data loader um, test studies. And instead of downloading the TXT file, I loaded the H HTML file. And I thought it was my TXT file. So, and actually my ETL is saying, oh, your um, column index is out of bounds. So it's saying you have some sort of file of error on your, or on your TST demo file. So you better check it. So I went back and I check it. And because it's failing before running the, um, stored procedures is going to throw a bunch of Java errors and it's not even going to rename your uh, data folder. So here it means that you should look, if it fails on this face, you should look uh, to your files and see if you have the files as specified to be able to, to be loaded using the ETL tool. Um, if anyone has a question, just uh, raise your hand or uh, write on the chat. Okay, I'll proceed. Yep, I've been, yeah, I'm watching. No one has raised their hand. Does anyone have a question right now? You can raise your hand or otherwise we'll keep going. Okay, good. Yep, I guess we're good. Okay, so let's see how do we prepare the files to be able to, to use the ETL tool. So what is the objective, what we want with the data curation and why we wanted to put in that tree uh, format. So we want to get our source data, for instance, in this case, a, a geo study, but could be your um, research data. And we wanted to put into um, a, st a structure where we have um, hierarchy of variables that can be used um, to select your data, so to select your patient cohort to do your queries. So and in Transmart, you can do this by dragging and dropping your variables into your um, patient selection window, so the comparison window, and you'll have three different types of variables, so the i-dimensional um, variables uh, that is identified by the double helix of DNA. You have the categorical variables and the numerical variables. And that is why you also need to think about how you want to load, how you want to uh, build this tree, because there is not a right and wrong answer on how you should build it, but it really depends how you want to store your data and how you want to work with your data. And sometimes you maybe want to load this exactly same, same subset of data using different strategies to allow uh, flexible querying. 
because although it's very cool to have this a graphical interface to build your queries and it makes the life of scientists much easier if you're not if you're not um, used to work with for instance sql querying it also uh, limits you a, a, a little bit for instance imagine that you want to do a query where you're trying to search a or b and C or D. So you could do this, for instance, tumor free or uh, with tumor and um, unknown. But if you want to do the other way around, A and B or C and D, it's going to be very, very difficult using um, this window. So you might want to um, play with the way that you load the data into the tree to achieve an easier way to do your queries. So in, in Transmart, um, the way it works, the variables are identified by the full path name. So that means the actual variable name is not, uh, for instance, in this case, patient neoplasm cancer status. We would think that it is, but for Transmart, the actual name is going to be private studies, test breast invasive carcinoma, clinical data, patient neoplasm cancer status, and then tumor-free. So tumor-free is a variable, unknown is another variable. Um, and this combination of uh, subject ID and the full path needs to be unique. So that means that, for instance, if I have medications, I can have more than one medication linked to the same patient. But if I have, for instance, days of death, I cannot have more than one number for the same patient. If, for instance, I have, um, imagine that I was measuring uh, blood pressure and I was measuring more than once and I wanted to store it into Transmart, I would have to create one more node to distinguish between my measurement number one and my measurement number two. Of course, if they are just duplicates, before loading in Transmart, maybe you should um, check what is the, the average and just load the average. But if you actually need to keep uh, multiple records for the exactly same variable, you, you would need to create uh, an extra node on your path. So pro, uh, for instance, a measurement number one and measurement number two. And um, this also um, applies, for instance, if you have a clinical trial and you're measuring uh, different um, clinical endpoints for different visits, you'll have to have the visit name as an element of your path. So clinical data um, to load it, you have some specificities. You have to have a study ID to link to that variable, the subject ID, so these are required. And then you have also the control variable visit name and data label, and this is to allow you to have things like this. So you are linking patient with a visit name and um, a type of uh, clinical endpoint. So this is option, and it, you only use it once you start having more complex um, data structures. Then you have also control terminology for the summary statistics of Transmart. That means that if you have age, sex, and race, you should call your variables that so that it populates automatically the summary statistics. You should not call them gender or, or something else because it will not populate automatically the, the summary statistics. So as an example, because it's easier um, if you want to try by yourself, if you go to um, GEO and you get one of the studies, public studies available, for instance, this one, um, GSE 25066, you will see on GEO what information is available. And then you should always try to read uh, any uh, associated um, article so that you can also understand which variables are we talking about. Uh, and especially if you're going to have multiple studies in, in Transmart, you should try to call variables that mean the same for the same, the same name. And sometimes uh, in, in different articles, they will have different names, but they actually mean the same thing. So you should always try to understand uh, the data that you're trying to curate. 
once you get your source file, so and I can show you where you get your source file. So if we go here to the geo page, so that is the page that I was talking about. So this is your data file, the series matrix file. So if you click, then you just have to download this and um, retrieve a file that looks like this. So the beginning of the file always has some, some metadata, and you can use this for your um, metadata curation. But here, it's your clinical data, so what starts with um, sample title. And because you have um, variables versus subjects or samples here, and the clinical data file in Transmart is um, expecting the other way around, so the rows will contain the sub, uh, subject IDs and the, the columns will contain the, the variables, the first step that you have to do is uh, transpose this, this matrix here. So uh, you transpose and then you start manipulating that file. You start adding your study ID. And usually for geo studies, we would use the GSC ID. You use your subject ID. So you just replace here the name of this um, column. So before it was sample geo accession, but we want it to be our subject ID. Then if you don't want to, to load certain variables, you just put omit. Um, usually you would try to um, replace everything by human readable format. You try to clean up a little bit, and then you have your uh, clinical data file ready. Um, other considerations, so um, as I told you, the loading restriction, you always should start by your study ID column. And then you have to have a unique data row per combination of uh, subject ID, visit name, data label. And if you have more complex mappings, you have the tag option available. And I'll show you how you use the tags. You can find more about uh, how to set up your clinical data file using the Transmart Data Loader Wiki. And once you have the file ready, you should save it as tab delimited text file. And then how um, are we going to tell the ETL where should we put each variable? So that's our clinical data mapping file. And on the clinical data mapping file, you have your uh, category CD where we, you put the path of your variable. So it means that you, each one of this is the folder separated by a plus sign. Um, so folder, subfolder, and if you have more subfolders, you just keep adding plus and folder names. And then on your data label, you have your variable names. And this is, um, so this column number, it's the, the column number of your clinical data file. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So it means that my First column is my study ID, my second is my subject ID. I don't want to load column number three and four. My fifth column is the disease. Disease, in this case, it's all breast cancer. And I want to store breast cancer um, below subject folder, medical, medical history. Okay, so it's here. The first uh, column of this folder will be the file name, and uh, the file name can be any, and one mapping file can map more than one clinical uh, data file. So imagine that you're dealing with really large uh, clinical data from, from a clinical trial, and you have a file for um, vital signs, another for concomitant medication, so you can deal with each file separately and then map them all using the same mapping file. And you, here you'll just um, call the different uh, mapping, the different clinical, map, the clinical files. Okay, so um, if you're using the visits, so because you have uh, variables that were collected um, using 
different visits, baseline, follow-up, uh, week one, week two. You can um, build your uh, category CD and explicitly state where you want the visit name to be um, displayed. So by default, the ETL will use your whatever you put on under category CD, the data label and data value, and then at, as a last element, the visit name. So for instance, clinical data, the endpoints, response, yes, and then week eight. But depending on how you want to query the data or how you want to store it, you might want to move the visit name upper into the um, path. So it, either you can um, set up visit first option using the ETL option visit name first, or you can also explicitly um, state on your uh, mapping file. So you would put category CD, data label, visit name, and then data value. So in terms of advanced options for data curation for the clinical data, um, you have several mapping options. So the data labels, the visits, the tags, and then you also have some, some options for validation and summary statistics that is really good for quality control of your data. And you have also options if you're doing incremental loading so, and to update studies. So in terms of uh, data labels, visits, and tags, um, so imagine that you have a clinical data file that looks like this. So you have your uh, patients, and for each patient, you went to the hospital um, in different periods, so baseline maintenance, uh, and, and for each period, it had different visits. For instance, for maintenance, it had a, a visit at day 10 and a visit at day 20. And some, some time points were even collected at different time points. So zero hours, two hours, for instance, uh, before or after uh, being administered with a certain medication. And then you have your endpoint your, and your response. So how could you map all this? using um, your, your mapping file and without um, manipulating too much this file and making sure that you have a, a unique variable for, for that patient. So you can use the, the data labels and, and the tags. That means if I'll say that my period is my tag one, and my uh, visit name is visit name, and um, the, the time point is my tag two, and my and I'm going to use my endpoint as my data label. So the way I will build the path for all the variables that I have in here, I will say, okay, I want to store this under clinical data endpoints. Then I want to use my data label, so my endpoint on column six. Then I want to use my tag one. So my period, my visit name, the day, and the time point, the hours. So if I map it this way, it's going to look like this in, in Transmart. Um, you can also use the data label for uh, multiple uh, variables. So in this case, I'm using um, the mutation as a data label for uh, my mutant allele, my mutation type, my variant type, and I'm always calling the same column as my data label. And it's going to look like this. And you can also call the, for instance, the study ID using the dollar dollar sign and to put it on your uh, study path. So my study ID in this case is G, GSE uh, zero tag, so and I'm calling it, so it's going to be my first element of the path. Then I'm using tag two and tag, so tag one and tag two, um, demographics and age, so the one that is highlighted in green is going to be displayed this way. And I can even use the tags to build the folder name. 
So in, in, in this case, highlighted in purple, I, I'm building a folder name that it's called tag, underscore tag end, and then I'm calling uh, another variable with the dollar dollar sign, and I'm getting my language from this column, and it's going to look like this. Uh, in terms of um, validation and summary statistics, you can add to your mapping file um, the variable type, so you can um, control if you're actually loading the right variable type, and you can also have validation rules. For instance, in this case, I'm saying that my age is numerical and that my sex is categorical, and that the, the sex is required, is a required variable, and I have several rules for my age, for instance, that is required, should be greater than 30, when sex is equal to male, should be less than 50. Of course, here I have a bunch of rules that don't make much sense together, but this is just as a test. So this is my mapping file, and this is my clinical data file. And as you can notice, for instance, here, I already have some missing um, values for sex. So once my, I try to load this study, and this study loads, um, as you notice in the beginning of this presentation, we have a, a summary statistics file. And this summary statistics file will have the description of each variable that I've loaded. So the variable type, number of um, values, if you have no values, what is the mean for a numerical value? Uh, and then in terms of validation, if it's required, yes, here my sex was required, but actually I have two missing values and it's telling me which subject IDs are missing um, the sex. And for all the rules that I've uh, stated in, in here, I'll have the the checks for for each one so which ones are uh, not above 30 and you have the subject ids here so in terms of um loading data um, uh, progressively so you're not you're imagine that you prepare your um data but it's an ongoing trial and and you want to um add more data so you have several ways to doing this, and you should use a uh, um, headline comment on your mapping file to specify how you want to do it. And if you want to um, update variables, you should use the update variable mode. So that would mean that old values for um, patients in the update variable data set are going to be removed and replaced with new ones. And so uh, all the other variables for these patients are not affected. So you, and you can play with this uh, merge modes and that they, these are described in the wiki, uh, depending what you want to, to update. If you want to update a subset of patients, a subset of variables, um, if you want to append new variables, not uh, present in the existing study, um, so you have uh, several ways to doing this. Because if you, if you don't uh, specify um, the default behavior uh, of the ETL, it's going to be remove the variables. Once you if you're trying to load a study that was already loaded, it's going to remove everything and it's going to load the new variables. So if you don't want to do this, um, check, up, check the, the options that you have available. Um, from my understanding, uh, I think there was an op, uh, um, a feature in, in Transmart that was going to be used to have an extra layer of mapping and to allow you to analyze studies, um, different studies at once. And so you would use this layer to map different variables in different studies. But you can still do this even without this functionality. Uh, so if, if imagine that we have um, multiple breast cancer studies. Here in my public studies, I have three. And actually, I would like to analyze them all together um, to see if I can um, 
increase my number of samples or uh, if I can see some similarities in, in these studies. How, how could I do this? So I could load them all together into one big study. I would use DTL files that I prepared to load individual studies. I would replace my study ID by a common ID. I would move the files that I prepared before into a shared folder. And either I would load my individual studies um, sequentially, so one by one, or I could mer merge the mapping file and load them all at once. And then, of course, we would have to remap and rename the variables uh, to, an al uh, to align all the terms and variables. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, no, so I'll, I'll proceed. Yeah, I'm still, uh, still not seeing any. Okay. Good, okay. In terms of high dimensional, good. In terms of uh, high dimensional data, it's um, very similar regardless of the type of um, high dimensional data that you have. So you usually always have um, a, ma a matrix of probes versus samples and with the values, e either if it's for uh, microarray expression, RNA sequencing, uh, you always have this format. And for, for gene expression, um, you can load it either as a normalized data, and you would put an R in front of the um, gene expression data file, or you could load it already as log2 transform normalized data, and you put an L here, or you could calculate your Z score um, and load it as um, Z. I've been um, discussing this with, with Natalia, and there's also a page uh, that was built by the Transmart Foundation Standards Working Group, where you can find more about normalization, because I think this is quite important. If you're going to use Transmart to analyze your data, you should know what are the specificities in terms of uh, normalization and loading. Uh, but the Take home message here is it's a highly recommended to load your high dimensional data already as log2 transform. And, and then you'll have to, um, how you want, what is going to be your approach to deal, for instance, with zeros and negative values or low values and cutoffs. So you should do this work before uh, trying to load your data into Transmart. So once you have your uh, gene expression data file ready, you should map um, your samples to your patient. So this is the gene expression data mapping file. Um, it has your study ID, the subject ID, and which sample correspond to this subject, the platform, um, and then you'll have a bunch of, of variables that you can use to specify uh, tissue type and time point. And then here in category CD, similarly, you have the variable path that you want to set up. Um, so platform for gene expression, this is a, a file that will map your probes to your uh, entry gene. If it's a geo study, you can download the platform from the, the geo um, Page. So you'll just, for instance, in this one, the platform is a Ifimetrix Human Genome U133A array, and you can download information from here, GPL96. And you would download um, the full table here. Uh, if your, um, if Transmart is, um, Transmart server is connected to the internet, it can fetch automatically the, the file and you would not have to do this. Um, if you have to build your custom platform, this is the minimal setting that your uh, platform file has to have. So the ID of the probes, the gene symbol, and the entry gene ID. 
and you can have multiple probes uh, mapping uh, one gene. Um, so in terms of uh, I-dimensional data, I really recommend to uh, think about your normalization. Uh, how do you want to map it? If you want to load everything into one node, if you want to have multiple nodes, for instance, for multiple tissues, or you can even load it uh, multiple in multiple ways, depending on how you want to analyze the data. Um, if you have multiple platforms, you also should uh, try to understand how you want to, to load it. And I always recommend to test the loaded data. So, and to test it, um, uh, I recommend to export the data once it's loaded. Uh, so then you can do this. Um, data export, of course, first you need to um, select a study. And then data export. And for instance, here, the microarray data, you could select it and export. And then your export data is going to show up here. So that you can analyze that what you had on your orig original file is actually what you're getting on your export file to make sure that you don't are running into any issues in terms of um, ETL. And I would also recommend to do some advanced workflows like heat map and box plot and check that you're getting what you would expect and you're not having any um, issues or errors. Uh, so high dimensional data supported by uh, Transmart are listed here. The specification for each uh, data type, they are very similar to each other and you can find more on the data loader wiki. So now let's just switch a little bit gears and I'll show you how to load the metadata and upload studies. I find that often people uh, load data and if you use so the, the ETL tool to load it, it's going to show up here, right? And you're happy, your data is here, you can do your uh, subject level um, analysis. But then you move into the browse window and it's a bit empty and you don't find here the studies that you loaded using your ETL tool. And I think it, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. So this is a separate step. If you want to have metadata associated to a study, you have to do it separately. And I'll show you how, how you do it. So imagine you already loaded uh, your, all your studies here to start annotating the study level data so that you can use the browse window to search uh, your studies. So, and, and the browse window, so as I told you, it organizes study level data, is organized by programs. Each program has, can have several studies um, associated. You cannot have a study associated with multiple programs. And then to annotate your study, you can use different entities. So the assays, the analysis, and the files. And you can also associate folders to assays where you can store files. For instance, your file folders could be used to store your ETL um, files that you use to load the data. Or you could uh, store also raw data for your assays, images. And once you have all that data um, um, annotated, you can use the search functionalities of Transmart. You can uh, search either using um, the, the, this box, the search box. You can use the, the filters, uh, so pre-built filters. And once you do this search, it automatically uh, updates the, the program explorer. We, and we if you it. do a free text searching, it will highlight the term that you search. Uh, in we do have a question, uh, Monica. So the mm -hmm. uh, Natalia, um, I'm going to unmute. You want to ask your question, Natalia? Yeah, it's it's not a question. I just wanted to make a comment uh, about the high-dimensional data. 
Um, so Monica has mentioned that when you load your high dimensional data, you can load them in one node or set multiple nodes. Uh, you can actually load in one node multiple samples for the same subject. So if you have visits or different tissues, you have to load them into separate nodes. But current version of Transmart is still a subject centric. 17.1, it will have more flexibility for the samples, but now it's a subject centric, centric uh, system. So you have to keep in mind that if you load your data into separate nodes, like uh, visit one, visit two, then you can compare um, treated and control subjects for visit one, treated and control subject for uh, visit two, but you cannot comp compare um, treated uh, subjects uh, between visit one and visit two, how the same subject uh, values are changing. So there are some ways of doing it in current Transmart and uh, Stephen Wicks in his training is uh, specifically, was specifically planning to address this little um, tricks and tips on what you do to facilitate different type of analysis within the Transmart. So I just wanted to advertise the next training that Stephen will do later this year. Okay, thank you. Oh, great. Thank, thank you for adding that, Natalia. I think it, it's very useful. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, <sighs> um, so I was just showing you how to create programs. So once you get into Transmart, you just um, click Add New Program. You can start populating all these fields, and um, right now they are uh, the ones that are mandatory, they are highlighted with a um, star sign. Um, create your, your program, you can start associating studies. So, and this is uh, the important part, I would think. To link the data, so your uh, subject level data that shows up on the Analyze tab, to the metadata on the browse, your study identifier, so the ID has to be the same as the subject level data. So in, in the case of geo studies, this is going to be the GSC 7390. So this is going to be the first column of your clinical data file. So if you don't use the exact same study identifier, it's not going to link your metadata to your subject level data. Once you add the, the studies, um, you've uh, added um, an ID that corresponds to a study with subject level data. It's going to show up here, this option. So subject level data is available for this study and you can open it in Analyze View. And then you can start adding the other entities. So the, the analysis, the assays, the folders, and it's all very intuitive, it's all, um, forms where you fill up and uh, press enter and uh, press save. And once you have folders, you can also uh, upload files. And once the file is uploaded, you can export, you can delete all using the, the user interface. And this is all drag and drop. So I can even show you here. I'm this for my asthma study. So these are, I have associated folders, analysis tags. I can move into the analyze view. So, and if I move into this folder, I have, I've um, uploaded my um, ETL files. And if you want to upload more files, just hit this. And you could drag and drop a file, oh, let's see. I put here some order confirmation for some order that I did into here to see if this is working. Okay, it works. So now it's, So my PDF file, now it's it's here, and I can delete it if, if I want.
we are um, I'm finalizing so I just want to leave you some useful resources and materials so additional training material can be found on Transmart Foundation page where you can see the, the training program the recordings and the slides will be available here um, you have the wikis for the Transmart Foundation so the trainings and tutorials link here the YouTube um, it's also here. If you want to report um, issues, you should access the Transmart Development Tracking Platform. And there's also this um, recording of Natalia's previous um, training on loading data that I've mentioned in the beginning. Uh, material specific materials on curating and loading data you have some links so you have also the curated data repository of Transmart Foundation you have some Transmart tree examples so you can see all those uh, specificities in terms of uh, visits and data labels and the ways that you can organize your trees uh, in terms of the, the Transmart data loader you have the wiki here and you have also the, the public um, studies curated specifically for uh, Transmart data loader. So the ones that you've seen on my public folder, you can get them from here and you can load, load them um, if you desire. And you also have access to the Transmart Foundation test instances if you want to uh, explore the Transmart platform. And uh, I'll just leave you the, the geo curation and loading example. I'm not going through it, but it's here. So it's step by step if, if you want to try it yourself. So if anyone has questions, comments, Natalia, if you want to add something. Yeah, if anybody wants to uh, ask any questions or if you'd like to raise your hand, that, just do it now. Natalia is ready to go here. Let's see. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to say, I just want to say this is an excellent training. Um, it's very systematic. I think it's going to be a great resource. Yes, Thank I, you, I, agree. I agree. I was going to mention that at the end here. Um, I think it was uh, really, you know, very, very nicely done, and uh, will be very helpful for people. So, um, we will have the recording um, posted probably tomorrow. Uh, and also, uh, I will get the slide deck from Monica, and we will post that as well. And um, thank you all for your time. Please uh, let your colleagues know that this will be out there, and uh, I'm sure it will be a good reference to come back to. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you at another uh, training class. Now, I have a couple of questions that have popped up. Uh, where can we find the link from this talk? Um, it will be posted on the Transmart website uh, in the training page. And so all of the training is linked there. But the recording will also be on our uh, YouTube channel. So either place you can see it. So it's, it's not posted yet, but it will be. It will be. Yeah, it will be shortly. And yeah, there'll be links also uh, in the slide deck. So these will be available, um, you know, if not later today, by tomorrow, it'll be out there. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Monica. An excellent uh, uh presentation and I'm sure this will be useful in the, in the future for everyone. So thank you. Thank you everyone for your time and please join us again for another training class uh, in the future. Thank you all. Thanks a lot, Monica. Thank you, Rudy. Have Excellent a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.